Hello, this is Vampire uh, here to share a little technique with you guys that um, I used back in my college years. So, in my college years, I said to you guys that I was doing um, full contact sparring, uh, full contact challenge matches. And um, if someone challenged me, the first most likely thing that I, I would do was to use my Muay Thai kickboxing skills, okay? And, um, you know, I mixed styles. I'm, I'm not a Muay Thai fighter, but I did get training. And back in the day, in the mid-90s, that's, that's when I was in college, in the mid-90s in Texas, how many people had authentic Muay Thai training? So uh, I was very fortunate enough to have that back in that time. And because of it, I think I had a very unfair advantage when it came to the Muay Thai stuff. And uh, where I got it was um, when I was in junior high school, um, because I had pretty much just come from come back from Japan to the U.S. And uh, I was not a good student to begin with, and I was behind with my English and stuff like that. So um, my parents sent me to boarding school in Denton, Texas at the time. They had an international boarding school. Uh, it was just a summer thing. But for that, it was international uh, students that went there. So they were actually Japanese uh, students, and there were two students from Thailand. Uh, one of them was kind of like a, a very rich kid. I, I would almost want to say he was kind of spoiled. He was like a little prince. And I think we called him something like that, like a prince. And uh, the other guy, he was a country boy. And uh, by country, I mean he was from the country of Thai, the, the country area of Thailand. So he like lived in the mountains and stuff over there. And this dude told me that he was a um, assist assistant coach uh, for a Muay Thai uh, camp over there. And, you know, he, he was from Thailand and he was Thai, so he had an uh, incredibly long name. And uh, anyway, um, I, I learned about some Thai culture. I knew a little bit before meeting this guy, but I learned a lot more about uh, the Thai culture from him and uh, the Prince guy. And uh, he's the one that taught me the uh, basic Muay, Muay Thai school. It was very old school Muay Thai. And he, it wasn't so much like he taught me a lot of techniques. It was just working uh, on the basics. And um, I, I should have... I should have done the uh, conditioning part where, I mean, he went running in the morning and stuff and he wanted me to go with him, but I just wasn't at that physical fitness level and to this day, I don't know if I could do it. Um, he was something else. He really was. He was taller than me and much heavier than me. Um, at the time, I probably weighed around 120, if, if even that. This dude, he weighed about 165, I'm thinking. Uh, that's my guess. Um, and, uh, I, at the time, you know, I was still growing, so I could have been like five, nine, um, five, eight, five, nine. This guy was taller than me. So, uh, I don't know. He was, was he maybe like five eleven? but yeah, he, his legs, I remember were massive, like on his body, he, his head looked really small, like in proportion. He looked like he had a small head. And his thighs were gigantic. It just didn't fit his, his body. So he kicked incredibly hard. Um, and anyway, that's, that's the guy that taught me. And because he taught me old school and he taught me like just really a lot of it was just shin conditioning. And through the shin conditioning, you learn how to kick kind of thing. So it wasn't so much like he was like, here, let me show you how to kick technically it was more so that just kick, just do it, just work on those shins. And as you're doing it, your kick starts to improve kind of thing. And it was right side and left side. Um, and, and because of that confidence um, in high school, you know, some people called me the shins of steel. And I was uh, part of my self-defense from bullying at the time 
was to demonstrate that, was to demonstrate that my shins were uh, conditioned. So I would get the tennis racket and I would slam them. I would slam them onto my shins like that. And I would tell people that it felt good. And honestly, it did. It did kind of feel good. It was just, it was that conditioned. And it would just make people's jaws drop. And so once I started doing that, the bullies stopped. Uh, so that that was a, a huge, huge part of, of uh, self-defense in, in my uh, high school days. But like I said, I learned that in my junior high. And uh, so anyway, in my college years where, where I'm like having these full contact uh, fights and testing myself. So at this time, um, you know, one of the, the tactics that I like to use and, and this, the techniques like naturally started coming in and that was because I believe my fundamentals thanks to that guy was so good that now I'm confident enough that I knew that my you know basics were so solid um, for my level okay I'm not gonna act like I'm a I'm I got solid awesome basics compared to a, a real Muay Thai fighter or anything like that but I was so confident in my basics um, that I was able to focus more on technique and uh, so in those matches where I fought people, um, if they were to kick me in the thigh, right, I knew that's what they wanted to do. First of all, uh, the way that he taught me, it was unthinkable not to check the, the leg kick, the thigh kick. So in today's MMA, I see people, you know, because of their fighting stance or because of their background, they're not necessarily... Uh, pure Muay Thai fighters. Maybe they did a little bit just just so they could handle a Muay Thai fighter, but because of their stance and their fighting style, they don't really check the leg kick. They they don't. That's not their thing. And the way that he taught me, that was unthinkable. It was old school. So you know, you 100% need to not let that hit you. So anytime I fought or sparred and someone landed a leg kick on me in my brain I was like oh I really messed up like that wasn't supposed to happen and uh, it, it's not to have a, this negative attitude and defeat myself but it was I was working on perfection essentially I was like I'm not gonna take a leg kick from you I'm gonna check it there's no way you're gonna land a leg kick on me I was that confident and I was operating at that level and for the most part I was able to do it and if there was an occasion where it landed, and I remember uh, there were a couple, one guy, it was a cheap shot. I didn't even know we started. Like, we didn't start. He just immediately did that, and that was the let's go, begin, which was uh, super sneaky. Um, but, you know, it's combat, right? You, you got to... You, you have to always... Uh, what did Bruce Lee say? Never take your eyes off your opponent. So I messed up there. Uh, but anyway, anyway, so... When a person goes for my leg, of course, I'm going to check it. Um, and w when they go for my thigh, they're trying to kick me in the thigh like, like, a, like a tie boxer. When they do that, I would check it the normal way. But you'd see in a lot of like uh, tie boxing uh, forms and also maybe some sculptures, maybe some artifacts, historical uh, paintings and stuff. You might see the TIE fighter and their foot, they, they bring up their leg like they're doing a leg check, but the foot is up. And it, and it was kind of like, why is the foot up like that? You know, I, I didn't understand that. Um, and and because if the foot's down, it's easier for the leg to slide through. Um, and it, it just made the more glancing, I could write it off easier. But um, some somebody said that, well, if, if you don't... Um, this was a recent MMA video, and, and I, I would like to quote the person because always in, in martial arts videos, if you get information from somebody else, whether it's just even a name of a technique, you should quote where you get it from. You should give them credit, you know, or at least so the viewers know where it comes from. And if it's your stuff that you made up, then you say it, you know, uh, just making the sources clear. But anyway, um, the some MMA fighter, female MMA fighter, I just saw her video, she said that you uh, have your foot up that way so that you catch their leg so that it doesn't, they don't kick through and try to hit your base leg. 
And while that's rare, I have definitely done that to people. And I have also experienced it where a person, um, I believe a Taekwondo fighter did that to me, where uh, they kicked through, I checked it, and they ended up kicking my other leg. Thankfully, it wasn't a powerful kick. But I remember when it landed, I was like, that's not cool. That's not right. You know, I checked it. Why did it hit my other leg? Even though it wasn't a powerful shot, I remember thinking that sucks. But, um, so that's maybe one of the reasons. And, and I thought that was a very good reason. But for me, um, it was to hook their leg. So when they throw that leg kick to me, I'm using my foot to, to catch their leg and scoop it. Okay. So I catch it and scoop it. And I bring it back here, almost like a catapult, so I could launch it. So they throw the leg kick, trying to kick me in the thigh, and I catch it with my leg, kind of like a soccer uh, move. I catch it, and then I, I launch it back at them. I launch their own leg back at them. And what I would try to do is I would try to aim at an angle where I, I know that their leg's going to be more far apart, where they're going to lose balance. So that was my goal, is to make them lose balance. And once they lost balance that way, now I could come in with my counterattack, a punch and kick. Um, it would give me that opportunity because they're a little bit off balance. And I would try to go for that. Now, if they didn't lose that much balance, which also happened, um, even though I kicked their leg back and they're still pretty solid, I would immediately try to go to kick him in their leg. So now I'm kicking their leg. They kicked my leg and I shot their leg back at them. And now I kicked them in their leg. And by doing that, um, because I sent their leg back to them, it throws them off timing a little bit. Their, their base is a little bad. Their timing is a little off. So when I kick them in the leg, they, ch they can check it, but it's not as good of a check so sometimes I'm able to still land a little bit on their thigh okay now so let's say a really solid Muay Thai kick landing to the other guy's thigh let's say it takes I don't know 15 20 hits until eventually they they fall down kind of like a uh, a lumberjack where you where you're chopping the tree okay so let's say it takes 15 20 hits right well, what I'm talking about here is after I launch their leg back at them and I throw the, the leg kick and they check it, I could kind of make it land. And when that, not always, but when that happens, that leg kick is even weaker than a normal leg kick. You have to understand that. It's, it's just weaker, okay, because it lands a little bit on their thigh. Not 100%, a little bit. But that is enough to now get me in the offensive and they start going like, wait a minute, I checked that, but it's still kind of stung a, a little bit. What's up? And then I, I throw another leg kick immediately after that. that. That's the one where you've seen Thai fighters where they, they launch the same kick twice, where, where they're using like a hop. It's a spring. And that second kick immediately comes after the first one. So that one has a much higher success rate after this because it all started with me launching their leg back and they're a little bit off balance. So I'm taking that opportunity now and I'm going on the offense. And so this second leg kick of mine now lands a little bit harder, even if they check it. So it lands a little harder on their thigh just because they weren't expecting it. They can't keep up with my speed. Uh, they're still a little bit off balance and they're a little bit confused going, why am I taking hits? I'm checking it. I'm checking it, but I still feel the sting a little bit in my thigh. What's going on? So that is the kind of uh, technique that I was using, which when I look back on now, um, I feel like I was it, it was just way ahead of its time. Um, I'd like to see it in today's MMA. I'd li I like to see maybe it's been uh, done. I haven't seen it personally. But I would like to see um, some fighters do that. Um, I, honestly, I haven't seen a, a Thai boxing match where um, I've seen that. But the level in Thailand is so incredibly high. You know, what I'm talking about, this, this stuff is probably like extreme. They're like, uh, that's low level probably. So, um, but anyway, this, this is kind of the, the stuff that I was using back in the day. 
uh, when I was using my tie boxing. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Hope that makes sense. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.